no, it's Faye here. Yeah, I just thought I wanted to come back on and give another little energy update about changes in the earth energy grid um, formations that I've been seeing a lot of lately and what kind of what that means for us, what it means for humanity, how we might experience it as individuals. So I think many of us have been feeling for quite some time, really, this big shift um, that we're experiencing as humanity is being called to evolve and grow, as the Earth is growing um, through her stages of development. And for a while now, we've been starting to see big shifts in things like the Earth grid. So some of the major energy lines rapidly expanded their width. So what may have been... 15 feet before, 15 feet wide from one edge to one edge in an A-line, all of a sudden was sort of like 75 feet or 150 feet wide. As these different currents um, change what we perceive as the sort of dowsable and measurable edge. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've been working in Earth Energy for many, many years, and um, I actually see Earth Energy. Um, it has a variety of forms, um, all sorts of energy. It has a variety of forms and patterns. And I always think for myself, um, energy lays for me are, are almost like um, they're, a, they're a form of energy, not exactly like lightning, but it's where sort of a the general area of, um, there's earth energy everywhere. There's like a, imagine it's like, a, much like there's sort of latent electricity in the air and it comes together to form lightning strikes then there's also sort of latent energy in the ground. And due to the geology and various other things, these, these channels of energy form along the ground. So as the Earth has been shifting and her electromagnetism has been changing, then these currents of electricity that we douse as lays or other forms of lines um, are shifting and changing. And... The forms that they make when they intersect and things have, have changed. So like nodal points have got bigger and interchanged. I've noticed that when energy lines cross or where they start, where they the conception point where they come out of the ground or the termination point where they spiral into the ground has changed considerably in certain areas. Um, and this means that... Um, we need to be mindful of these when we're working with energy because it we really need to double check our dowsing for one thing, because we can be dowsing to what we think these things are like, because that's what we learned some time ago. And it's really important to double check in on the questions that we're asking our own sensitivity so that you're dowsing what is actually there and not what you think is there because you've read it in a book that was written five, 10, 15 years ago, because these things are changing a lot. And it's it's caught me a little bit by surprise, actually, the, the rate and speed of the changes. Some of it, I believe, is due to seismic activity. And we are, I think, astronomically, um, the astrology of the Earth says that we are you're going to be in for some seismic activity. So I think that's one of the shifts that's occurring. Um, but what I've noticed is, is a lot more sort of smaller activity as well. So... We there are little sort of vortices, vortices of energy that you get that rise up. There's sort of like a ice cream cone of energy that comes up, and um, there's a lot more of those about popping up and just sort of popping up and disappearing. There, a lot of these are happening around bodies of water, everything from streams to ponds to lakes to rivers. So I think that the um, the water is carrying a lot more of this current. And it's not water itself. H2O actually carries, you know, doesn't carry electrical charge. It is the minerals and substances in water that carries the electrical charge. The, the same way that uh, we used um, soil and stone to carry this charge when we built ancient uh, monoliths. So if we look at things like mounds like Silbury Hill, the um, they're built over large aquifer layers and most chambered cairns and dolmens when they were covered in soil. So what we get now with the dolmen, we get the skeleton, we get the rib cage and the capstone on the top, but the vast majority of them were covered in soil. And the width of the length from the entrance to the to the back of the mound or of a chambered cairn or of a cairn, the width from one side to the other, or with things like Silbury Hill, they are all over 
big um, underground aquifers that are about as big as the structure above ground from edge to edge, if that makes sense. Um, so the earth energy that goes above ground has this sort of electromagnetic current and it likes to ground itself through the earth's surface down to this water the same almost electricity does electricity likes to strike ground over underground water as well so it's this level of electromagnetic current and it deposits itself spirals into the ground over these bodies of water and it's at that point that we build these sacred structures so we can have lines of multiple strands and they might go in once, which will get a single um, chamber dolmen. They might go in and split into multiple spirals, one, two, three, going off there, four, even five. And those tend to be where we get um, chamber cairns that have multiple chambers in. Um, the earth energy comes in through the door, through the light box, through the crystal that was over the door, the quartz crystal, and then grounds itself in these chambers. The, the the structure of the dolmens itself or the chamber cairns themselves, when they had soil, same as Silbury Hill, when you have these layers of organic and inorganic material, it is able, because of this electromagnetic spectrum of earth energy grounding down and the aquifer above it, it is able to harness all this uh, paramagnetism in the soil and piezoelectricity in the rock and it creates energy or orgone or plasma. You know, it, it, it harnesses this energy. So these structures become like a battery. They become like a power pack. And within those structures then would be a great place for us to enter one of these um, chambers, or we could sit on these mounds, or we could place seed in these chambers because this energy makes everything better. When we expose seed to these chambers, then the seed will germinate uh, more quickly. It will grow more uniformly. It will be disease and pest resistant. It will crop quicker. It will um, crop at a, a quicker, you know, ripen at a quicker rate and it will produce more yield per like head of corn or whatever. So it makes it makes um, plant life enhanced when we expose seed to these areas. If we expose animals, and I've worked on pharmacies in this, if we expose animals to these things as well, then animal birthing rates are better, birthings are easier, the calves or the lambs are healthier, they grow better, they need less artificial feed. So the same things applies to us when we expose ourselves to these energy, it enhances our physiology, it enhances our mental well-being and emotional well-being. Maybe they were also birthing chambers in the original past. But these spaces, because of this buildup of orgone, kind of a plasma energy to me, it looks like these sparkly big clouds. They go up in columns like a big chimney, has these sparkly on top. Um, you get these toroids of energy that go around the chimney and pulse up. Um, they're really spectacular. I must do a more in-depth video drawing them out for you. Um, but those places then, because of this huge spike in electromagnetic energy, we would perceive that as like a portal, like a wormhole um, that moves beyond the barriers of time and space. And this energy changes our neurochemistry. So it enables us to um, capitalize on this rift between time and space and have out-of-body experiences or time slip experiences or receive the divine. But what I've noticed about a lot of these ancient monuments, A, you know, they don't all work very well now compared to how they did because they've got bits missing, um, soil removed, stone removed. So it's like having a bicycle with no chain or no handlebars. Um, they don't function as well as they, they should. But also what I've noticed is the energies in these spaces um, is really building up. So even though energy lines may have been hugely wide, the structures themselves um, channel this energy in. They, they still force it to go into these narrow, through narrow passages or into the, into the mounds, into the chamber cairns or through the um, stone circles, for instance. But the nodal points and the entrance points is much more of a buildup of energy. So unfortunately now with things like, I say, many dolmens, we don't have the soil mound around the dolmen that held capstone up. So they don't have this inorganic and organic layers of material to capture this energy. So they're sort of like this pressure cooker feeling of energy um, with nowhere for it to go. And I think 
the sacred sites are like um accentuated version of what we're feeling everywhere out there in the energetic world at the moment it feels a bit like a pressure cooker it feels heavy we feel heavy we can feel this you know this rising tide of energy but at the moment there's no release for it and i think that release will get periods of release like um the new moon is almost today like a, a boiling period but when we get um full moons there's more of a release um and we're building up to this phase in the summer but there has been these toroids of energy like I say uh, cropping up all around water so I mean, water is becoming highly charged at the moment um with this sort of energy that we can't quite put our finger on it's electromagnetic in nature but it's quite hard to measure because it's on the more subtle realms and what i've noticed is that water is becoming more highly charged as we're getting repeated waves of energy that come out of geological fault lines uh this is a kind of setup that's key most of our sacred sites are near geological fault lines and where the fault line um is so between my hands is a fault the two plates meet um out of these fault lines we get these light waves of energy come up and they literally do wave across the ground and they're so deep above the ground and they move they used to move slightly faster at walking pace but i've noticed the waves are deeper they're now coming out at well over person height and they're much faster across the landscape. And when those waves intersect with energy lays, it's like turning an energy lay from what was a three amp fuse to a 21 amp fuse so that there has this much more of energy going down to it. So it's like much more powerful lightning. And then it's entering these sacred spaces with all this oomph and we're not capturing it anymore like we used to because when we capture this energy in these mounds they act like battery packs and they slow release it into the soil over a long period of time so rather than having this wave of energy that comes off whoop, energizes the soil and disappears again and we lose all those life-giving benefits what we seem to have done was capture all this life-giving energy in our sacred structures so that it would slow release over time to have maximum benefit for the area that that sacred sites cover and that the 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 zone of influence of that sacred site you know will be whatever we can douse for the influence of them so if you've got one here and its zone of influence comes out here then you'd build another one over here so its zone of influence meets and then the whole of your landmass um is able to capture this energy that comes out of fault lines it comes through energy lays and um, multiple things sort of come together at sacred sites. So we're able to capture and harness this energy to enhance all life. But at the moment, as I say, it's like if, if we've got garden hoses that this energy ran down, the, the pressure that's coming through it now means we need a fireman's hose. And that is the pressure that we are feeling. That is the pressure that we are feeling individually. So we might feel really ugh, headachy, stuck, blocked, I think we'll see that play out, as I say, in sort of like po the political spectrum of the totality of the human experience. Uh, we'll see that play out, you know, in things like wars, um, you know, elections that are occurring on. It will play out in these things because we all feel these things, whether we're aware of it or not. And for people like me, you know, I, I am not a world leader, how I feel about these energies and how it affects me my mentality is not likely to impact millions of people but if you're a world leader and you're negatively impacted by these things and it skews your judgment or your thinking then that has the capacity to affect millions of people so we want to be mindful about these energies at the moment and that we're going through them and that it's a period of evolution for the planet and because we are of this planet we are creatures of this planet we are going to um, um be subject to these changes as well so we are still in for challenging times you know we're this is a phase um astronomically we will go through this phase and come out the other side of it but you know we've heard talk for years about we're moving into higher dimensions and um you know all these kind of things but you know our soul is vast and multi-dimensional we already exist in all dimensions it's just our capacity to be aware of dimensions beyond our normal human experience has been expanded so 
if we say that here's a ruler if we say that the dimensions of the universe are infinite there's lots of them but the human experience is only this half a centimeter here that's what normally what we're only able to experience then because of the shifts in energy what we're now able to experience is more reality that would be along this infinite ruler of everything we can experience in the universe or however big the ruler may be who knows but it's not that but our soul exists in all this it's just our physical human capacity as our soul small portion of our soul is having this incarnate experience it's that that is limited and with these shifts in energy and how they are affecting us mentally and physically change i think they're actually changing people's brains they're changing our minds they're changing our neurochemistry it is that change that allows us to move beyond our limited experience and expand it out and i think that's what people mean like when they think we're moving into dimensions it's not that we haven't they are already there we just open the door a little bit more and because earth energy has this profound ability to affect our um, neurochemistry and many things it is that that enables us to have these out of you know assist us in having altered states of consciousness and outer body experiences i've also noticed particularly the effects of shifts in the earth energy are absolutely really profound at night at the moment so um i'm quite sensitive these to these energies because i can see them and for me, and it may be triggering for other people as well, the, the lucid dreaming um, or having DMT experiences in the night. Um, if anybody's not had a DMT experience, they can they can vary from actually seeing DMT creatures. So like these strange creatures and they're 3D and they're in the room with you. Um, and they can take, there's a weird octopus looking one. There's one that looks like a really scary clown. There's one that looks like, um, oh, almost like a giant spider. And these are archetypal forms that many, many people see. There's something that sort of come, now the the feeling was that they were like archetypal images, you know, from the collective unconscious. Uh, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure whether they take on this form for some reason that enables us to perceive them but i've had a lot of dmt experiences uh and a lot of psychedelic experiences of this kaleidoscopic tunnels that are all coming out and it's out it's not you don't experience it in your brain you see it out there um, with your eyes um so people may have lucid dreamings your sleep may not be as good um and there's just this general feeling of as an easiness because in many respects a lot of these shifts are happening because actually the earth under our feet is shifting. There is seismic activity occurring. So on some level, our very primal instinct says, oh, there's shifting sands underneath my feet. This, it, it might, you know, I generally feel sort of unsafe physically, unsafe mentally, unsafe emotionally, and perhaps even unsafe spiritually because I can feel this buildup of energies. Because earth energy does affect us on a spectrum. It affects us physically, mentally emotionally and spiritually it affects us on many many levels so when the earth energy has these huge peaks that come out of um, fault lines or different shifts as the in moon phases times of year as the whole solar system is moving through through the universe you know but right now for some reason these shifts seem to be particularly particularly profound um, I've not seen Earth energies expand like this ever in, in my life. I mean, they may well have done before because on the human scale, God, you know, 50 odd years of my life is nothing, is it? It's the blink of an eye. But I've, you know, I've, off, I've all my life, I've watched these shifts in energy with lunar phases and with times of year. And it had this regular pattern that I could always rely on. And all of a sudden, Earth energy ladies went, ba -dum! and the grid systems that I see around things, the radar lines that come off things, everything just shifted massively. It was like it got supersized. And I would say that buildup is we're building up to something, some big shift, or that may be the new norm and we have to adjust to it. Um, but with all that, we are going to feel that personally in our lives, in our relationships, in our, in our uh, thinking, 
in our, um, we're going to feel it collectively in our family units, our societal units. We're going to feel it on a on a whole humanity level. And then Earth, you know, and, you know, maybe the solar system are all undergoing these shifts because some of this energy that comes in um, from other planets, you know, is different. Um, I've noticed that the plasma coils that go across the sky, they're different. So if you're not familiar with plasma coils, if here's the Earth, let me, I've got something round. Here's, here's the Earth. And these huge coils of plasma come out in big hoops and go up into the magnetosphere and come back. And they come up in waves. So these big rainbow-like patterns are like one arch after another. And another wave will come up over here. Another wave will come up over here. So there's all these sort of big intersecting loops that, of plasma, these big coils of swirling plasma that go across the sky. They've shifted as well. So it's like everything that I could always see that I relied upon as to tell me that, you know, normality is ticking away and everything is everything is as it should be. Everything has shifted. Um, I don't know what's going to be the end result of this. It's just a journey we're all on, whether we like it or not, because we can't we can't get off the bus. Um, but I just want people to be aware that I think we will have releases in this pressure. They will occur at things like um, new moon and um, new moon will push us forward. And then the full moon will be a release again. We're also right now we've come up to this midsummer phase of course in the northern hemisphere so all the solar energy is much more enhanced and now we've just gone past the solstice so things will start to sort of calm down a little bit again as some of the earth energy features may well shrink a little bit as we go back towards the shortest day for them to start expanding again so i don't really have um an answer of, of this is what's happening and this is where it's going but i just thought it might be helpful for people for me to come on and share about some of the shifts that i see in in the energy um about what's happening so everything from the sort of base layer of energy that shimmers across the ground all the time um that's it's it's all much more so um and it's a joyous thing to behold um it is quite spectacular where it's leading us who knows but we're in for we're in for some fun times i think we're in for some exciting journeys so i'd love to hear from you if you see energy as well i'd love to hear perhaps what you are seeing too or how are you experiencing these um shifts um let me know because um I think the bound, the walls are breaking down, perhaps. I think maybe more people will start to see energy or they will at least start to have the sort of the veil between worlds will become more thin and people may well start to have more psychic experiences, more um, consciousness expanding experiences, more connection with non-human beings like nature spirits or we would consider to be aliens, but beings from other dimensions, other spaces that we don't normally have contact with. Um, I think those walls between that we create for our reality, I think that those walls are getting quite thin. And it'd be interesting to see how people's um, experiences change and what that means for humanity as a whole. So, yeah, exciting times ahead.